Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at the awesome free add-on that's included with Blender called Tissue. So as I said, Tissue comes with Blender as standard, you just need to enable it in the preference menu. And let's start with what it is. Well, effectively it's basically instancing, except it's just so much better than just instancing. Pretty much if you had an issue with instancing or you wished it could do something better, Tissue will do that. Now I'm a little bit late to the party on this one. I didn't actually know about Tissue until I got a comment on a video, so thank you so much Justin Phillips Art, and then a couple of comments from other people after that. But since then I've been exploring this and well, this is absolutely great. So in the background I've been making a piece that we're gonna be using as our object to instance. It's just something fun that seems to demonstrate the idea really well. So let's start going through the basics of this and what tissue can do. So we've got this object here and I want to instance this on let's say a plane. So I'm gonna shift A mesh and bring in a plane. Let's S to scale that up to make it a bit bigger. I'll just move that to the side a little bit and then I'll apply the scale and let's go into edge mode and control and E and let's subdivide that, let's say 10 times, just for this demonstration. So this works really, really nice and easily. And I will say there's some quite good documentation for the basic functions of this up on Blender. There's a link in the description of how this works and we'll talk about these different functions one at a time. So firstly, the orientation does matter on this. You'll notice that there is a X and Y, and this is going to make a difference with the positive Y and the negative Y being the important bits to think about. This isn't gonna really matter for the first two versions of this that we're gonna do, but it will matter for a later one, so I'll bring that back up and talk about that then. So what we need to do is click on the object that we want to instance, shift click on the object that we want to instance on and then I'm going to press N to bring up the end panel, go to tissue and click tessellate and then we're going to use quads because this object is made of quads and as I said we'll talk about the other ones later. Let's click OK, it's going to take a second to work this out and there we go. We've got a 10 by 10 grid matching the fact that we had 10 by 10 faces on the original. I'm just going to G and then Y move this to the side. Now what's important about this is using this option at the top to generate, keeps the original mesh, we'll come back to that later because that gets really cool, and then we've got this object that has been duplicated each time. Now, you will notice that now this tissue tools bit becomes relatively redundant because it's not doing anything here, so I'm just gonna press N to hide that. We will come back to that later for the other ones. Now, we can still do things with this. It's actually in the object data properties, and if you come to that and down to the bottom, we have this tissue tessellate option and it's got all of the settings here. So this is non-destructive. We can still keep fiddling around with this. It just isn't done as a modifier as we'd normally expect. Now, we can do things like changing the scale of this. So at the moment it's one, we can exaggerate this or put it back to one. We can also change the offset to change its position relative to this plane or where the plane was. The other settings are relatively unimportant at this point, at least for the basic settings. I might do some more videos on things like the extra funky things you can do if people are interested in it. But there is one setting that is very important, and that is the merge setting. So if I come into vertex mode, all of these joined points, and I will say this is really important. If you come to back to my object here, I very intentionally made sure that on each side there is matching vertices, otherwise you're gonna have a problem with this. It won't match up very nicely and therefore won't work as well as you want it to. But at the moment, these vertices aren't actually attached. So we can see we can get holes if we pull those apart. Though if you come to the merge option and then go back into edit mode, these have now become attached. So that turns this into a nearly solid object but we've got all this missing now. We could just select all of these edges and then join edge loops, but we don't actually have to. If you click on this button down by the merge option, you can change the distance to merge by as well if you need that. But importantly, we've got this closed mesh and in this instance, we've got some edge loops. So I'll go to bridge edge loops. And now we have a solid object. So instancing, but better, but it gets even better than this. So this object is still connected to this. It doesn't really show where other than it's got base object here and you can set if it's using modifiers or not. But importantly, they're still connected because of that. So if I go into, let's say, vertex mode, I'm gonna turn my portional editing on. And let's just select that one there and then G and then Z that up. And then I'm just gonna scroll up to make something funky there. And we'll do the same thing over here, but this time down. So we've got this more interesting shape. 
Now if I come back to my object, click refresh, it will copy that now changed shape. So yeah, instancing, but vastly better in my opinion. But it gets better still. There is an issue with this in that, well, it's looking quite segmented because we've now changed everything, it's not flat. And we can see that being copied over to this shape, which probably we don't like. So the obvious solution to this is we could use the subdivision surface modifier. Now you could start using this over here, but we need to start breaking everything up at this point. So I'm just gonna come over here and then press control and two to add in my subdivision surface modifier. And then I'm gonna change that boundaries to keep corners so we've got those still pointed and suddenly we get this nice smoother mesh. Now, if we come and have a look at this, if I go into vertex mode, effectively what we've got is four smaller squares per large square because we've subdivided it twice in half and then in half again. Now, if we come here and click refresh, we're going to have the same problem that you have with instancing. So if I click refresh, it's still instancing, but now everything's tiny because it's trying to instance it on each of these little squares. And that might be what you want. It is definitely smoother, but it's not what I wanted. I wanted those larger circular shapes on it. Now this is where our patch option comes in. If we have a look at the documentation for this, what this shows is that this patch method will copy this onto the original mesh in the same way as we would had done before with the quad method, but it will take into account the subdivisions and then use that to deform our original object. Now for this to work, our original object needs to have vertices around the edge to allow this deformation to happen. If for example, we didn't have these here, so if it looked like that, then this wouldn't work very well and it would cause problems. I'll just undo that. So what I'm gonna do is come to this, change this to patch, and you'll notice that now we've got a much smoother shape. We can see how it's been broken up into parts here so it's smoother, but we still have the same sizing of we've got 10 on each of these sides. So that is the patch method. It's really useful and something that I've looked for in instancing in the past, but you just can't really make work quickly. So even if tissue just did this, I would be ecstatic about it. Let's move those off to the side. Now, the other one we're gonna talk about is the fan method. Now, I'm gonna be clear about this. I'm not talking about the frame method because at the moment it doesn't appear to be working. There seems to be something wrong with the maths of it and every single time it creates an error. I have looked online and other people are saying exactly the same thing. If this ever does start working, I'll do another video on it and I'll just link that in the description and I'll put it as the top comment as well so it's easy for people to see. So I will come back to this if it ever starts working because it looks really cool. So let's start having a look at how this fan method is gonna work. So I'm gonna make a different object this time. So let's bring in a cube and let's just G and X that over a little bit. I'm gonna scale that on the Z axis, apply the scale, go into edge mode, control and R, add two edge loops there. And then I'm just gonna go into face mode, select that face and that face. And then let's S and, nope, let's turn off proportional editing. So S and Z that up. So we've got something like this. So relatively simple. In fact, maybe let's go into edge mode and G and Y those along a bit. And importantly, at the moment, I've made a mistake because the Y axis is the bit that's important, if you remember that original diagram. So what I'm gonna do is R and Z 90 degrees, and then Control and A and apply the rotation. Now at this point, if we want to make a manifold object, I need to remove the edge faces. So let's go there and then delete and then faces and we've got our object that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna shift a mesh and I'm gonna bring it in a circle. I'm gonna down this to let's say eight and we're gonna fill this with an engon just so it's really clear to see. Let's S to scale this up and let's talk through what this is about to do. So if we have a look at the diagram, what's gonna happen here is this is going to instance, but as opposed to instancing where we could either do it on the faces or the vertices or the edges, this is gonna do some quite clever things. What it's gonna do is it's gonna imagine that this center point is there and then it splits this off into what I can only describe as pizza slices. So we're gonna get one instance on each of these pizza slices. And we can see from the diagram that is provided by Blender that this is going to treat the minus Y, that's this direction, 
as the outside, so it's going to be towards the edges, and then the positive y, which is that side, towards the middle. The other thing we can see it's going to do is it's going to treat the three point and the two points, so that's the points towards the positive y, that's the bit up here, as being equal to each other. So what it's effectively saying, I'll try and demonstrate this, but it won't work perfectly, is that if I go to my proportional editing and then linear, it's going to scale these and try to bring them together to make something that's a bit like that. You'll get what I mean when I do it, but effectively it's turning it into lots of triangles. So let's go through and do this. So I'm going to click the object, shift click the thing that I want to instance or tessellate it onto, N, and then tessellate, and we want a fan, and we'll click OK. And as you can see, it has brought everything together. We're going to want to click that merge button and we could close the mesh if we wanted to, but we'll do this with something more complicated in a second. So yeah, that's what we've got here. So let's look at this on a bigger scale because that looks fairly rubbish. So I'm just going to shift and D, bring this along, and then let's get rid of this subdivision because it's just going to cause complications. We want this 10 by 10 at this point. So what we're going to do is change this into a more interesting shape. This will work on this. If I come to tessellate and then fan and click OK, you can see what we've got there. But it's a little bit boring. But you can see how it's worked. Everything's been turned into triangles from a point in the center like that. But let's do something with more edges to it. So I'm actually going to just grab that and delete it, and we're going to come back to our original shape. So what I want to do is convert this to something more interesting, and we actually have something in tissue that will do this. So we're going to turn this into lots of hexagons, and to do that, we can just click this Convert to Dual Mesh. You can also do it up here, which will generate a new one, but keep the original plane, but I just want to change everything. And importantly, I don't want these ones that are part hexagons, so I'm just going to Preserve Borders, turn that off, and we've got just all of our hexagons there. So at this point we can do exactly the same, click, shift click, tessellate, we want a fan, click OK, and now I can just come down here and then do the same thing again, let's bridge those open loops, and we've got a solid object. Now if we wanted to, we could get more technical with this or do some funky extra things with this, let's just go into edge mode, let's control and R and up that there, and we'll have to do the same at the bottom as well, and delete those two. Select those, and let's F there, and then F and F. And if we go into object mode, and then we refresh this, and we're going to have to turn those closed bridge loops off, you get some really funky cool things starting to happen. So look how cool this is. Now, at this point, notice this bridge edge loops didn't work very well because now there aren't edge loops. If I come down here and go to cap holes instead, this will still work. So we have got ways of making this function, even if you're doing all these weird, really cool tessellations. So that is tissue, an absolutely awesome add-on, and I've covered just the tiniest part of this. I want to be very, very clear about this. There is way more to it, but I really wanted to explain those fill modes, because for me, it's the bit that makes tissue awesome. Now, if you want to see some demonstrations of some really cool things you could do about this, there are hundreds of examples of this on YouTube where you can see people making rattan furniture or baskets or things like that. And yes, I could have just made another example of exactly the same thing, but that just seems boring. I thought explaining how this works is way more important than just adding to the pile of tutorials making rattan furniture. If you do want to see some of the other cool things that you can do with tissue, please do say in the comments. I've been playing quite a bit with this over the last week or two just to make sure that I know as much as I can about this to make this video. As I said, I'm relatively new to this, but I thought it was something well worth sharing. I also wanted to give a really big shout out to the Patreons who help support the channel, because while playing around with this admittedly for the last week or two, I have been slightly less productive on making 3D models than I normally would be. Hopefully this has been worth it for the Patreons and you're gonna be able to put this to some really good use. As always, if you found the video useful, please do hit the like button. It really helps out. If you want to know when I'm releasing videos each time, hit subscribe. And as I said, there is a Patreon page. If you want to add some more support to the channel, please do head over there and anything you can support with is really, really appreciated. Have a great day, guys.